download the file, I guess, first. Okay. Let me see how I do this. Now, if I wanted to find this file uh, and I didn't know you, is there any way to? No, not right now. Okay. Right, right now, we're, we're strictly in, in testing, and there's already been a couple, you know, new functionalities that I'm going to be adding. What is so, my what is my username? Uh, you're going to the wrong uh, thing here. Fantastic. All right. So there's a zip file in there. It's got an executable and a readme, and the readme kind of just tells you what everything's about. So right now, one of the things that I'm aware of, and there's a couple ways I can get around this. I'm kind of waiting on feedback to see how people want to want to progress with it. But you know, for instance, everything right now is a wild card. So if you search for Doomfletch, mm -hmm. it will always return two results. And right now, it's set up so that if it returns more than one result, it won't give you the information because I don't want it to spam you. Okay. So, so like, what exactly does a wild card mean, though, in the, in these regards? Uh, uh, and programming a wildcard is like an asterisk. Um, essentially what that does is if I have a word and that wor word is race car and I want to do a comparison statement where, you know, I'm saying, hey, um, find me anything that looks like race. Yep. I would do race and then put an asterisk at the end and that makes it a wildcard. So if it finds race, which it does in race car, that's true. And essentially, you can add wildcards in between. Right. All I'm doing is replacing spaces with wildcards. So when you run mm -hmm. a command like essence, you yep. can do essence, def, hatred. And it will return deafening essence of hatred. So it doesn't need the full name. The idea is to make it easy to type the command and search for things. The latest version, which is 1.5a, when you start it, it will a file explorer window will pop up and you will navigate to your client.txt. Okay, so that, that worked this time. So now what do I have to... Okay. All right, so what do I, what do I gotta look for? Uh, so I do have the default paths in the uh, readme file, but essentially if, you, if you're if you using the Steam client, it's under, you know, Steam apt, common, yep. path of X file. And so you, you need to double click the client.txt file. Yeah, and if it's on standalone, it's under program, GGG, right. path of exile, client text. De depending on where you have it. Some people have it on a different partition, or they have a different volume letter for the name. Sure, so, sure, sure. So you do have to have path of exile open. The way that the loop works is while, the game, while there's a process called path of exile, it will continually monitor this, this oh, log file. I can see, because it's uh, reading guild chat. <laughs> yeah, right, right now I have... <laughs> So right now, for debugging purposes, it yep. uh, it does export that data to you know to that console. Mm -hmm. When you run a command, you'll see other stuff. So if you do a currency vol, it will return the value of vol in chaos. Okay. So if I type this just in all chat currency and space you can type it anyway. Val, and it is, orb is currently 0 0.77 chaos orbs. Okay, Val Orb is currently 0 0.77 chaos orbs, as we now know. And this will also tell me, in case, like, say if I was deaf, right, and I'm a deaf person, uh, this does export that to the file, or no, it's just the audio? It's just the audio. We can, uh... We can have it return that output on the screen. Sure. It's not difficult to do. Yep. For the purposes of, uh... You know, testing and in my test group, there's nobody that's deaf or hearing impaired. And then there so. is, is there any way to augment the volume of this? Not right now. Okay. There will be. Um, there's there's several things that are going to be added in the future. Sure. This was a, a quick proof of concept, and I want people to use it so that they can have feedback. You mm -hmm. know, that's what one person already pointed out. He's like, you know, when I do, you know, command currency Chrome, I don't want to hear that a Chrome is 0.2 chaos. I I would rather it a ratio. Know, do the math, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and do the math and go, you know, seven Chromes to one chaos or something yep. along yep. those lines. So that's something we'll add in the future. I'm gonna have to hard code some specific uniques like Doom Fletch, Doom Fletch's Prism, things that have overlapping words. You know, we'll have to yep. do. What about like uh, yeah, you know, maps and shaped maps? also I so guess. Same, same issue right yep. now if you do um 
it, if you look for like spider layer or if you do strand, it will it will say too many results. Mm. So there's two ways I can get around this. I can hard code all of those and go if it's strand, you know, return return this specific item. Or I can leave it up to the user to define their own wild cards using asterisks. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try out both at some point in the future. I think I would prefer to go with having the. I, I always prefer to empower the users. I think that's always a better idea from just a an application standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, for a design, you know, for design considerations. And in this particular instance, you know, I. I imagine most people understand, you know, like what a wild card is and how to use it. Well, you just explained it. Okay. And so this is a PowerShell, right? That's how. That's what the this terminology is, yeah, for this so, is. So this is written in PowerShell, and PowerShell is um, the the Windows scripting language, for lack of a better term. It's a uh, it's the Bash equivalent for Windows, and this is a. Uh, this is just converted to an executable because some people, it, it takes out a couple steps. Uh, Sometimes, you know, depending on how your system is set up, you might have to set your execution policies and do certain things. And, you know, I, it runs just fine as an executable. And PowerShell is really just a uh, C sharp wrapper. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually all C sharp on the back end of PowerShell. It's, um, you know, it, you can actually run native.net and C sharp code inside PowerShell. You know, typically we use this for system administration tasks in IT, mm -hmm. but it, it it can do so much. And because we're yep. only reading a log file and then we're connecting to, you know, POE Ninja, who was, you know, nice enough to let us use their APIs, you know, otherwise we wouldn't be able to get all this data because all this data is, is crunched and consolidated. Yep. So, you know, like I, I have written, you know, quote unquote, trade sniping or private indexer tools in PowerShell and you can see things as they come on the market, but every update from the API holds a little bit of data. Yep. And what sites like PoE Trade and PoE Ninja do is they compile that data into a database and make it searchable. That's why when you look on PoE Trade, you can see something that somebody posted 30 days ago. Yeah. Because they're keeping that data there. Now, <clears throat> if like, to do that on your own box is very resource intensive. I mean, mm. That's going to be a big database. If you go and look at PoE Ninja's, you know, just API downloads, he's already cleared 11 gigs. That, that's 11 gigs of just <clears throat> text. That, yeah. That's a ton of data. Not a huge database, but that's just a ton of data. And when you talk about people accessing that, you know, it's so we're, we're very grateful for them being able to, you know, open their APIs and let us grab this data at will. It is very nice that we have access to this type of thing because otherwise trading would be a complete cancer. So, yeah, I'm glad it exists basically because at the moment there's no real trade system in the game as far as GGG stands. I mean, they have the third party one, but it's well, kind of like a flea market at the moment, which causes yeah, some problems. It's it, and it does cause problems. You know, there's I, we, I think we all know several well known. You know, very wealthy individuals within the game that manipulate the market, and you know, fucking you know Rayman and it. standard piece of shit. <laughs> or yeah, there, there's a couple people. You know, I'm not gonna name names. But I'm gonna name I, names. I know people that do it. Oh, you go right ahead. Um, Primal, but, he's yeah. a piece of shit. He, he <laughs> he's, he's, all he's time. a complete yeah. Okay. <laughs> Slippery Jim's a known hacker. Just confirmed. Sli Slippery Jim has been a. Uh, been testing this. I know. He seems to like it. So. I don't trust him. He's a hacker. No. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about regarding this, uh, this new and exciting endeavor? Not really. I mean, it, uh, it's it, it pretty, works. We, it's pretty we straightforward. It. Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we, I, as an IT professional, I try to keep uh, use well, the you know, concept. Keep as, it simple, as stupid. A, as a very uh, as a fellow IT professional, I uh, shut the fuck up. I like to. I too can see plus plus, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, software, hardware, all that stuff. I have. Yep. 
I mean, it, it does, it, its job is to tell you what things are worth and hopefully in the future currency ratios. And it looks like it's on track to be able to do that pretty simply, pretty effectively, and without being too invasive, which I think is everything anyone really wants when it comes to this type of thing. So as long as it could be, you know, effective, non-invasive, and just, you know, do what it has to do, I see no problem with it existing. And if anything, it's, it should be a only augment POE, any sort of trade interaction. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people have pointed out to me, you know, what, why would I use this? I can just have it up on my other monitor. But not everybody has an extra monitor. Some people play on laptops. True. Know, and especially when I'm the most annoying thing for me in a league is pricing divination cards. I, I yeah. can't I can't fucking stand it. I have to sit there and go find the card and get past all the you know people that are price fixing. Mm -hmm. And POE Ninja kind of has some of the some of the price fixing protections built in. So I'm just taking their average price and returning it to you. Sure, sure, yeah. And th there are some things I, I realize now that are going to be actually impossible to put in here um for example if you're trying to look up skin of the lords right you can't figure out you know a lot of that price is strictly dictated by a the color of the slots and b the randomly rolled key, uh, implicit like on like from the keystone it rolls now you can't look that up and it's gonna that's the average price is gonna get screwed by that so there are some things you're gonna sure. have to manually look up but i would just in general this is a tool that i could see myself using in league um, it just seems super convenient because not only is tabbing up if you don't have a second monitor completely shit, but past client in general is super ridiculous when it comes to tabbing out sometimes and maximizing and minimizing the screen of the client window. For whatever reason, their client is just horrible. So if I ever wanted to drag path client across monitors, it crashes nine times out of ten. If I try to resize path client, it crashes nine times out of ten. And countless people I know have the same issue. So anything to prevent me from having to minimize path, I think is pretty a-okay -okay. divination cards is a great example there's no wiggle room in those prices they're pretty much they are what they are same thing with lots of maps um so yeah it just seems like any of the things that have standardized price that you're buying in bulk like sextants maps sack frags this it seems invaluable yeah and that's really what it's kind of for is you know especially at the start of the league where prices are in flux and they're changing very quickly you know, things change from day one to day two to day three. Mm -hmm. And now you can you can sit there and go, oh, what is the price of this? And How you know, much is for, this? For those thinking that, oh, this is just going to like further aug auto automate trading and that's not a good thing in path. If you want to buy a rare, you still have to look it up. So it's, it's at the end of the day, this is only making it convenient for the things you're already buying in bulk pretty much. If, if it's going to come to you having to buy a specific rare boot, you're still having to do that, you know, on foot research which again i think is an important part of path i really do think that trading in path should be kind of like you're hunting for a specific item i just wish it would be a, a better way for them to do it but that doesn't really that's for another discussion but for when it comes to things you would be buying and they would be buying easily regardless this just makes it seem like it's easier which is which is good most of these things are pretty much things like currency fragments essences prophecies unique maps maps you, any of these things they have they have strict prices that really don't change when it comes to rares right that's a whole other ball game but when you're buying well, these type of things this seems like a like it does what it does well and you know to be fair one of the things that makes the game so great is understanding what the stats and values of certain items do oh for sure yeah. so you know and like <clears throat> let's say you're someone who's played the played the game for two weeks you're new you know 3.0 comes out and you're going through everything and you know a unique drops well now you just type in this command and it'll tell you how much it's worth mm -hmm. you know instead of you know having to go and look it up and look at stuff you know it, it's just it's an easier way for people to just look things up and keep playing the idea is to keep playing and not play path of trading but to actually play the game yep get the data you want you know throw it up for sale and move on with your day mm -hmm. yeah a lot of people uh, tend to just end up sitting in town having to look things up it can really detract from the uh, leveling experience because then they type slash play and they see that they've got to you know maps in 15 hours and they're like how come other people get their maps in six hours i must be shit but no it's just most of the time you're just not realizing how much downtime there is because you're having to trade you're having to look these types of things up so anything to expedite that for sure is a good thing 
Oh, cool. Well, do you have any questions? Yeah, how do I scan people for mirrors using this? Is that like possible? It a it actually doesn't even uh, doesn't even pull mirrors because Poe Ninja doesn't doesn't show mirrors on the currency tab. Well, this is now shit, and I hate it. So. No, oh, sweet. I guess that's about it. Um, is there any final things you'd like to say? Maybe, just that, uh, maybe like your name to start. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I I prefer to just stay in the background. All right. Um, well, thanks for know. coming, Lightwoods. I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> Really nice to have you stop by again. Kind of like a first look. This is what we're making. You know, I'd say expect it by 3.0. Okay. To be, you know, fully working and, and ready to go. Um, you know, obviously you'll be able... I I don't know if I'm going to add standard support mm -hmm. to it. Sure. Just because it, I, things are pretty consistent at standard. Yep. And I think what I'd rather do is just add, you know, League softcore support. and hardcore sure. for the leagues. Yep. Yeah. You know, and that's... That's that's what I just like to do it that way. So, all right. Well, uh, thank you for coming, Ziggy D. It's great to have you here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that about wraps this up. All right, man. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Matthew Lighty. You don't know me. <laughs>